Hello, this is Yozo from Karasu and today we want to go over the Deep 27 Dripper by Kafek. Why in the world did Kafek make this stripper? Who is this stripper for? What kind of coffee does it extract? What is its cup profile? How does it compare to its OG flower dripper? So we'll cover all these topics today in this video. Okay, to give you a little bit of context about Kafek, they are a brand under Sanyo Sanyo. They're based in Oita, Japan, uh, the southern part of Japan in the Kyushu Island. Founded in 1973, they are really well known for their paper filters and also more manufactured products for other companies. So for example, Hario, all their paper filters were manufactured by Kafek. And with their sort of manufacturing knowledge and skill set, they founded their own brand called the Kafek in 2016. So it's quite a recent brand that Sanyo Sanyo brought up. And through Kafek, they have, and also obviously their sort of knowledge of manufacturing, they have released really interesting products, uh, roast level sort of different uh, filters, light, light roast, sort of medium roast, dark roast uh, filters. Uh, the Abaco paper filters, which is really popular here at Kurasu. And uh, they manufacture our drip bags as well. Um, so they work on a wide variety of things, uh, as well as, of course, uh, the Flower Dripper, which was uh, released again um, in 2016 and has come into prominence over the past few years um, as well uh, through uh, Daiki Hatakeyama-san, our sort of Japanese own. Uh, Brewers, uh, World Brewers Cup second place in 2021. He used the flower dripper for, for his comps. Um, so the flower dripper itself and Kafek as a brand has come into prominence over the past few years. When we think about the strength of Kafek, we think about their vertical integration. So they make paper filters and they make drippers um, and they make a whole wide range of other sort of coffee products. So that's a real strength for Kafek. Because when you think about drippers, when you think about, okay, let's make a dripper, we have to think about paper filters first, right? We have to think about um, the existing paper filters, the 60 degree cone shape angle, or maybe even the Kalita wave for flat dripper, flatbed drippers. And sort of we have to work backwards when we think about the construction of drippers. But Kafek, they don't need to think about that. They can do their own thing, which is great, which is amazing. So that's how they came up with something sort of crazy looking like this, the Deep 27, because they are able to uh, put their R&D into making a dripper and they can also manufacture and obviously sell uh, paper filters as well. So that's the real strength of Kafek and we really hope that they continue um, this path and they, they continue to sort of impress us and uh, excite the coffee community with different other products as well. So what are the features of the Deep 27? Well, obviously the angle is very different from a traditional, uh, I have a fl actually have a flower dripper here, the flower dripper. Uh, so you can sort of see the difference here. Um, so this angle, this acute angle, allows the coffee bed to be layered. Layered much more than what you have in a traditional sort of 60 degree angle dripper. The opening of the dripper is very small as well. So what that means is that you can pour coffee, wherever, whatever the pouring structure, whatever, where you sort of pour the coffee, and you can't really miss because it's so small. Center pour and circle pour sort of doesn't really exist in a way in, in, these, in this dripper because, it, because um, where, you're, where you are pouring is so small, right? Whatever way that you pour the water, um, water is gonna flow, pass through that deep coffee bed. So. Um, what Kafek says, and we do agree, is that anyone can brew really delicious coffee easily. And even in Kafek's sort of website and sort of we've sort of seen some videos that Kafek has done, um, they basically just, that's how they do it. They just basically pour water in there um, whenever um, the, the coffee bag gets low, they just pour water and then it brews good coffee. And again, we, we've done that as well. We've, we've um, tried that to do that in our shops and it does work well. It does really create a really balanced, um, nice sort of sweetness, um, yeah, in, in, the, in the cup profiles. But at the same time, we should compare. We should compare between 
what kind of cup profiles that the, the Deep 217 versus a traditional sort of OG flower dripper, 60 degree angle uh, flower dripper produces. So let's do that next. Okay, so let's start the brew. We are using 13 grams of a Kenyan wash coffee. We'll do a really simple, uh, from comparison, a 100 gram, 100 gram total, 200 gram pour. Um, yeah, so let's start. We'll set the paper filters and, okay, so I gotta say something about the paper filters. Look at this, it's just so different, right? And it's in a way really funny looking just because I think we're not used to seeing drip, uh, filters like these. Um, but uh, yeah, they're amazing. They're absolutely amazing and that's the beauty of CAFEC that they can do this. So we'll set the paper filters in. And okay, so I have to talk about some small perks that I have with this stripper. And that just has to do with, it's just so small in, in terms of the opening. So when I try to rinse the paper filter, it is a bit harder to sort of rinse out just because you're aiming you're trying to aim for the sides in a really small opening, so it's much harder to do than a wider opening. Um, another thing, another sort of perk, is that it's harder to uh, <laughs> it's harder to put put the coffee inside uh, the dripper because again, it is such a small opening, and you know if you're careful, you shouldn't have an issue. But we are obviously working in sort of a cafe setup, and when we try to do this in our shops. You know, when we have, when we're pretty sort of packed and we want to try to brew out as much sort of coffee to our customers as possible, it sometimes does get hard and sometimes does get a little bit irritating with sort of coffee flying over, uh, all over when we try to sort of put the coffee inside. Uh, another thing that I have to mention is that it's really hard to clean sort of the bottom because you're trying to reach in a place where it's, it's really hard to reach with a, with a sponge, for example. So um, if you're really anal about those kind of things, it, it, it is sort of like a irk uh, that you may have. But again, just small details um, that I, I thought I should mention. Okay, so let's, uh, let's start the brew. Hundred grams, 30 second bloom. Okay, so we finished our extraction. Extraction time, basically the same, uh, around 2.30. I should mention the grind size. It's just a regular, sort of what we do for filter coffee, sort of like a medium, medium fine, um, sort of grind size. And yeah, let's see how it brewed. So again, this is the Deep 27. And this is our flower dripper. Yeah, so very different cup profiles. Um, the Deep 27 has this really nice tea-like, uh, just clarity, um, sweetness, body's very balanced, but a lot more clean, a lot more sort of bright, um, if you would say, flower dripper, um, more sort of more body. Um, sweetness, different kind of sweetness. Feels that a little bit is more extracted out of the, out of the coffee. Um, again, same grind size, same brew time, but just different, very different cup profiles. And why we think this is happening is probably, uh, in particular, the sort of the initial phase of the, of the brew, right? Um, since the, the layer, well, the, since the height is so high, um, the flow rate is very high as well when we pour the water inside the coffee bed. Um, so especially in the initial phase, sort of quote unquote bloom phase where a lot of the sort of the um, extraction happens, the flow rate, um, water passes through faster. But at the same time, since the coffee is layered in such a way, um, everything passes through. So you don't really get 
we wouldn't say it's an under extraction. We would say that again, it's just something different. It's just something that very clean cup, very tea like, very bright cup profile. Um, so that's it. That's the sort of the difference between what we can see with the, the flower dripper and the date 27. Okay, so let's think about a brewing recipe for the Deep 27. What can we do that's unique and that only this dripper can do, right? We know that it brews good coffee. We know that it brews a very balanced cup, no matter sort of how you sort of pour. Um, but what can it do that other drippers can't do? And when we think about this, uh, we thought about, okay, let's, why don't we try extraction with a smaller dosage? Small dosage, meaning less than 10 grams. We're gonna do an eight gram um, to 130 gram uh, recipe. And why are we doing this? And who in the world would want to have a, a, a sort of like a recipe or a dosage like this? Well, eight grams, uh, when you think about something like a Geisha Village, something very rare, something very sort of um, competition grade coffee, it's very expensive. Right, and um, if you do like a traditional sort of 13 gram, if you if you have 100 grams, you probably get maybe seven cups, right? Um, if you are doing an eight gram brew, though, you get 13 cups, uh, close to 13 cups anyway. Um, so you get more sort of time, more more chances to sort of enjoy uh, that sort of expensive coffee. Or we can think about sort of anaerobic or very sort of like a funky processing. Um, sometimes, for me at least, when you have that really sort of in your face processing, one full cup is a lot to swallow. So you might only want a smaller portion. Plus with the D27 like we, we saw in earlier, uh, you get a really sort of cleaner, brighter sort of extraction. So you still get that really nice sort of uh, you, you still get that feel, you still get that flavors of, uh, from that unique processing, but it's a cleaner cup and a smaller portion, so you can enjoy it. Um, or you can just want a smaller portion, right? And traditionally, if you want to do that, you would have to go towards an emergent style brewing. So you could say like AeroPress or a French press or something like that, or, or even just a cupping bowl, right? Um, it, it was harder to extract evenly with a traditional sort of paper filter, 60 degree uh, paper filter, just because the opening is so big with just eight grams or sub 10 grams, it just really gets hard to um, saturate all of the, the water in the coffee bed. But with this, um, even if it's eight grams, and I'm gonna put sort of eight grams inside here right now, you still get a really sort of tall, narrow, um, you know, coffee bed that um, the water can sort of pass through evenly. Yeah, it's, I think it's really hard to see, but you still get a fairly nice sort of um, layered coffee bed in here. And I'm just, I, this is just eight grams of the Geisha Village. Um, so this sort of opens up maybe sort of new doors to what we've um, traditionally had in, have had in sort of paper filter, um, pour over style coffee brewing. So let's start, eight grams, uh, we will do a 40 gram uh, pour first, then just a 30 gram, 30 gram, 30 gram, up to 130 grams uh, every 20 second. So 40 gram pour first, in 30 second bloom, and then again, 20 second, uh, every 20 seconds we'll pour another uh, 30 grams, and we'll hope to and around maybe uh, a minute to the half, uh, two minutes at the latest, right? So just a really easy sort of pulse pouring. Um, the reason I'm doing a pulse pour here is because again, the even though we have this sort of higher bed, it is less coffee than we, what we traditionally brew with. So um, just a, a little bit a slower um, extraction.
So that's it, 130 grams, super simple, and we wait for everything to drop down, draw down. Okay, so the extraction is done. Let's pour the 130 grams of, of coffee. Fits perfectly in this really small, cute 1616 Arita cup. Yeah, I would not, if someone were to give this to me, I would not have thought that it was only eight grams of coffee, right? It's very balanced, very evenly extracted, still get the nice sweetness. It is, it is on the sort of lighter side. It is, again, very tea-like, um, uh, again, but very bright. Um, and sort of you get the really nice sort of rosé kind of um, sort of a little bit of whiny texture from the Geisha Village, a little bit of sort of floral notes, um, strawberry from, uh, from the coffee as well. So you get the really sort of nice uh, flavor palettes. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we only use eight grams, which is great, which, because we really want to save um, this kind of coffee because it, it, it does get uh, a little bit of pricey. Mm, I would really enjoy this every morning. Okay, so there you have it, the Deep 27 Dripper by Cafec. Uh, super unique, super interesting. Um, who is it for? For beginners, really easy to extract. Um, we tried a new recipe, we tried a new way of brewing it, uh, sub 10 grams, eight grams of coffee. It works brilliant, so if you want those really um, exotic coffees that you wanna savor, this is a really interesting dripper. And in general, someone that's really interested in extraction, right? Because cone shape, paper, cone shape uh, drippers traditionally, 60 degree angle, obviously, you know, between the Hario, Kono, different ribbings, but this is just a really different way to extract, a different really way to sort of the coffee bed is layered. So it's really easy to sort of see that distinction and really try to understand, okay, how does coffee extract in these kinds of situations? So, we're finding um, from you know, a coffee roaster's perspective, just a joy to sort of play with and sort of try to understand um, and expand our horizons of, of coffee in general. So give it a try. If you have tried it, um, please let us know how you feel about it Come in the comments below. If you tried our recipe, please let us know. Um, and of course, everything you can buy at Kurasu in stores or online, these are very, very popular right now. A little bit sort of hard to get um, this time around, but um, we will sort of try to keep it in stock and in, in, in shop because we're really loving this and it's just something new. Um, thank you, Cafec, the to sort of make something different for the coffee community because it's always exciting to try something new. All right, so thanks again. Uh, hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you again soon. Goodbye and have a great day.